In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how I made my Stevani cosplay. All of the accessories like the belts, necklaces, anklets, and headpiece will be in a separate video. So this is the design I'm replicating. It is by Sunset Dragon on Instagram, which is where I found this photo. I would call this a Art Nouveau redesign of Stevani. And in case you don't watch Steven Universe, Stevani is the fusion of Steven and his friend Connie. So for this costume, we're going to start off going over how I made the pants. These awesome iridescent parachute 80s wonderful things. I'm using the Simplicity Pattern 5359 just because I had it, but any big poofy pant or short pattern will work. For these shorts or pants, I'm probably going to call them both through the whole video, but I layered three different kind of sheer fabrics. A light pink, a really sparkly iridescent purple, and then a much flatter but still a little sparkly purple. Separately, the fabrics were all very see-through, but layered on top of each other, my pants weren't see-through at all. Now for all the glittery gold stars on the pants. I made these out of a material called glitter flack, which you can easily get on Amazon or some craft stores like Michael's. I have this huge bag of just scraps of glitter flack, so I just scavenged through it to find pieces big enough that I could cut my stars out of. I cut all my stars by hand. I did three different sizes and just kept placing them on the pants until they looked full enough. Remember, these pants are going to be gathered and very poofy, so you kind of need more stars than you would think because they're going to get hidden by the wrinkles of the pants. So how glitter flack works, it is a adhesive on the back, kind of like a heat patch. So you're just gonna place these down on the top layer of the pant fabric. You can see I'm putting a piece of paper in between my iron and the glitter flack just to protect my iron from getting any stickiness on it. But you're just gonna use an iron on a pretty high setting with no steam to heat set the stars. Now my fabric is pretty thin, so I have a towel underneath and I had to pry up the stickers so they wouldn't stick to my towel. But it was no problem as long as they were still warm and I didn't let them dry on the towel. Once your top layer is significantly starred, we're gonna go ahead and attach all three layers together. To make things easier on myself, I just laid all layers on top of each other for each leg and surged around the entire edge. Once all the sides were connected and it would be easier to handle, Put right sides together and sew the inner leg seam together. And now to make these pens parachute pens. You're gonna just turn the leg right side out and fold over a little bit of the knee hem and give yourself about a quarter inch room to stick an elastic band through. Taking a small strip of quarter inch elastic that measures about the width of right below your knee where the pants are gonna set, you're gonna attach a safety pin to an end and thread it through that little loop you made at the bottom of the pant. Sew the elastic together and just slip it back through and there you have a parachute pant. Once both your pant legs are constructed, go ahead and turn one right side out and then stitch that center seam together. With that, the pants are done and we're gonna go ahead and add the thick red waistband. So just to make things easier on myself, you could make this waistband more of a belt and make it separately from the pants, but I'm gonna attach it to the top line of the parachute pants just so nothing moves and it's just it was just easier in my brain to connect them together. When you're making these, you wanna kind of think yoga workout pants, you know the ones that have that really thick waistband that roll up on each other? That's the style I was trying to mimic. For the waistband, I bought a very stretchy and thick spandex material. So you're gonna cut out two large rectangles and serge the top of them together. This way your waistband is double thick. Turn that large rectangle right side out and you're gonna pin together the back of the waistband at the circumference of your hips and at your waist. You can see how there's a slight incline right there based on my measurements. Sew the back seam together and you have a waistband. Before you add the pants to the waistband, you need to gather them. And remember, the pants are not stretchy, only the waistband is. So the hips of the pants need to be big enough to go over your hips. So make sure you don't gather them too much. Once the pants match the size of the waistband, go ahead and put the pants and the waistband together and sew around that hip seam. And after wearing these pants for a convention, I noticed that just that spandex waistband wasn't enough to hold up the weight of the pants. So I ended up adding just a little band of elastic to where that seam is. This just gave it a little extra support so my pants wouldn't sag down. And voila! Harem Art Nouveau Yoga Pants. 
well, almost done, because now you gotta sit down and hand sew little pearl beads all over the bottom of the pants. I mainly sewed size eight millimeter pearls on, and then I interspersed some two millimeter. And just pearl and pearl and pearl until it looks good. And then the pants are done. And now on to what I thought was a simple shirt, but turned out to be a beaded monstrosity. So to start off, the undershirt was a very loose fitting, just linen shirt. So I thought, why not just drape it? You'll get the right look. Oh, it took so much longer than expected, but whatever. I made a pattern, lots of trial and error with draping fabric over my mannequin until I got the right shape and fall that I was looking for. Here are my final pattern pieces. So the fabric is just a very standard but thin pink linen. And because it was so thin, I did double up both the front and the back so my shirt wouldn't be see-through. And then to keep both layers of the front and both layers of the back just in order, I surged both pieces. Once that is done, go ahead and sew up the side seams and hem the top and armholes. The hem at the top might curl a little bit, but just a press with the iron will settle that down. I temporarily added some elastic straps just so I could try it on and see how it looked. Adjust as needed until it hangs the way you like. So for the straps, they are beaded and I wanted to go with this irregular beading pattern. If you wanna use the same beads for the entire strap, go for it. But I did make sure that both straps looked the same with the order of the beads. So yeah, strung up some beads and then just hand sewed the ends of the strings onto the top. Now for the sleeve drapes. I bought a really pretty delicate pot pink lace. And for a lot of it, I was just laying it over my mannequin, getting it to fall right. So these look more complicated than they are. It's really just a really long rectangle that's pleated at the front. It is loose over the shoulder so it hangs and flops, and then the back is tacked down to the back of the shirt. Make sure you try it on and move your arms up and down to make sure that they're loose and baggy enough. I hand tacked the front together where I wanted all the pleats to lay, and then hand tacked both those sides to the front of the pink shirt. Once it was attached to the pink shirt, I carefully hemmed the top edge so it wasn't loose. And now that the pink sleeves are added, all we have to do is sit there and bead them for hours and hours and hours and hours. So I mainly used size four pearls and then went in with a little bit of size two pearls. So it doesn't look like it, but there is a lot of fabric to the sleeves because it's gathered and ruffled. Yes, it will probably take forever, but the outcome looks so pretty. Now we're gonna make the front thing, which I have come to call the necklace, but it's really like an armor piece that I am attaching to the shirt itself. I made a pattern and then I cut that pattern out of just plain craft foam. I wanted to embellish the design a little bit more so I was just playing around with some rose beads and some googly eyes and some puffy paint until I got a look that I was happy with. But for the main piece of the necklace you're just going to cut out a piece of the craft foam and then a really small edging piece out of craft foam as well and glue them together with contact cement. Once that base piece is done I'm covering it in thermoplastic. Again, I am using Thibra for this project, but you can use any thermoplastic you have on hand. I'm using a wooden tool to push down the edge and get it really clean, and then trim off any excess and just slowly overlap it on the back, heating as you go. But be careful not to melt the craft foam with your heat gun because it is very sensitive. Skipping ahead a bit, but I just detailed it with rose beads and some googly eyes, and then the two inner lines around that main edging piece are just made with puffy paint. Once I glued all those things down, I am just spray painting it with a metallic spray paint. Now you need to age it, so I'm first going over all of the crevices with brown and highlighting it with some white. You will notice the big star in the middle is missing. I'm eventually going to cast that out of resin so it's a perfect 3D star. We'll get to that in a moment. At this point in time, I did not have my star molds in, so I went ahead and glued the armor piece into the front of the shirt. To attach this necklace piece to the shirt, I'm using this Guterman Creative Glue. I don't really know what this glue is used for, but it's made by a sewing company and it works really well to adhere non-fabric pieces to fabric things. At this point, I got my star molds in from Amazon. I mixed up a small batch of resin and poured it into the larger star mold, and then I spray painted it with the same gold spray paint to match the necklace. Glue that on with some super glue, and then continue to age around the new piece with some browns and some blacks. And with the necklace piece finished, that was the last touch for the majority of the Stevani cosplay. 
So again, I'm going to have all of the accessories like the anklets, bracelets, belt, and headband in a separate tutorial, so look forward to that. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I love the way this costume came out. It is so pink and shiny and glittery. Ugh, I'm in love, it's my new favorite. I hope you enjoyed it as well, and if you like cosplay or Steven Universe or anything nerdy related, go ahead and subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next time. Bye! Oh, it's recording!